Okay, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the basics of how to use a multimeter. So whether you're in the middle of a home project or you're an upcoming technician learning how to use a multimeter uh, to get the job or maybe you're just starting your job, um, learning how to use a multimeter is definitely a crucial skill for you to learn that can either save you time or save you time and earn you money. So in this video, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the basics of how to work a multimeter so you can feel more comfortable and more confident in your next job or whether it's a job that you're working right now. We're gonna measure voltage, we're gonna measure current and resistance with our multimeters. So here in front of me, I have a couple of multimeters that I have. Uh, one of them is the Klein Tools MM400. This has been super helpful just around here in the house. And I also have uh, my own Fluke 789 that's been super helpful as well, it's my favorite. And uh, before we go any further, what I'd like to do is, as you can see here, there's some symbols that would be super helpful to go through. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So the first symbol that I want to kind of go through is the voltage alternating current, which in the 789 has a B with a squiggly line on top. And um, the Klein Tools has a V with a squiggly line right beside it. So squiggly line equals alternating current. You would want to use this setting if you wanted to check voltage drone home or for example, 120 volt powered solenoid. The next one is voltage direct current. And this has a V with the line and a dash line right under it. And it basically has the same thing on the Klein Tools MM400 as well. And for voltage direct current, what you would want to do is use that setting to be able to check the car battery, check your, um, your battery on your power tool, or whether it's like a 24 volt loop powered circuit or something like that. The next setting that I want to talk about is the ohm setting, which is presented by this symbol. And, and this ohm setting is basically checking for resistance. And you're gonna see the same symbol in e, any multimeter you pick up. So let's talk about resistance a little bit. What, what is resistance? Resistance is the opposition of the current flow in an electrical circuit. When we wanna check for something called continuity, we also use it in the ohm setting on the multimeter. And continuity is basically just checking for a complete electrical path for current to flow. And here in just a sec, we're gonna use some wiring and some resistors to check for continuity. So the next setting what we're gonna look at is looking for current, which is measured in amperage or also just short called amps. The most important thing whenever you're checking for current is to make sure you're set up in series with the electrical circuit and not in parallel. We're gonna check that out in just a little bit, but first let's go to from the top down, let's check out the voltage first. All right, so let's go to check for voltage first. So first thing you wanna do is you got your lead set up correctly on the multimeter, black on the common, red on the voltage. It's in the off position. Let's go to switch to voltage, alternating current. You can hit the select button, go to direct current, and we'll select it back to alternating current because we know we have 120 volts here, alternating current. So what we're gonna look here is we're gonna test this out and let's look for 120 volts here. So your black lead, I'm gonna put it on my return side here. And the red lead, I'm gonna set it here on the right side because that's for the hot side. And this side here is just for the ground. So if you go here, then here, you got 120 volts. So if you were to take this out, and set it on your ground, again, you see 120 volts. And same thing here on this side, so if you're using your volts, alternating current, black on the common, where it says calm, red on the voltage, where it says uh, just the letter V for voltage, we're basically just checking the same thing. Make sure on the right setting, set the black on the return side, or negative, red on the hot, and there we go, 120 volts. All right, so let's go and check for voltage direct current. We're gonna set our multimeter to the voltage direct current setting. That's aligned with the dash line on the bottom. And now we're seeing 24 volts. Let's see if we can get a more steady reading there. 24 volts DC. And basically what this, what this is doing, is basically taking 120 volts here, it's stepping it down to 24 volt direct current output. 
If we were to test it with this, basically be the same thing. Voltage, direct current, except the only difference here, we're using the same leads. We're putting the black on the common, the red on the voltage, where it says V. We got voltage here. Here you can select AC or DC. It's in the AC. We're gonna hit select. It's now measuring DC. And basically do the same thing. All right, so these are really hard to see, but let's see, get a little zoomed in. So here you have a resistor. This is a 560 ohm resistor. And on this side, there's a 220 ohm resistor right here. And what we're going to basically just check for resistance, we're going to go to the ohm setting, set our leads in the correct spot for ohms, black on the common, red for ohms. And we're just going to connect using our alligator clips here and see how much ohms we have. So this is a 560 ohms, or here the resistance, it says kilo ohms, which is correct, right? So 1.0 kilo ohms would be 1,000 ohms. This is 560. And now we're just gonna test, this one would be, I'm guessing it's gonna be 0.2. Okay, so this time it didn't go kilo ohms. This time it just used ohms, which I was expecting to use 200, or to see 220, but I see 216, which there's always a tolerance on these as well. This one has, this one has a plus or minus 5%, so we're within tolerance there. Let's check for continuity now. We got our leads here, the correct spot for ohms. The setting here is for ohms. We're checking for resistance, which is also for continuity. Our two wires here are not connected. You show an open loop, and once you connect, you're showing continuity. So this is basically just a test for a complete electrical path. Okay, so let's go ahead and check for current. So if you can see here, what I'm doing is basically I'm using this Fluke 789, which has the ability to be able to source current here on the milliamp, it's actually sourcing or outputting a milliamp current output with the meter. And what I'm doing is connected in series, I'm using this meter to be able to read how much current this is actually outputting. So this is doing the sourcing and this is doing the reading. So if you were to, this is basically, I'm using this lead and this lead here. So these two leads here are coming from my 789, this yellow one here. So all I'm doing is using here with milliamps, because I know this is gonna have a milliamp output. I'm not gonna connect this red to here. And once you have an electrical path, it's basically outputting my current Basically going from one line to this one, then out of this black one, back into this black one, and then back into the red, basically just making a circular path here. So if I connect that, I see four milliamps, and here I see 3.99, so pretty, pretty close, right? So if I go into source, go up, by 25% or go up to eight milliamps, I now see 7.98. Press it again, 12 milliamps, 11.97, 16, 20 milliamps, 19.97. And back to four, four milliamps. The whole point of it is in series, or I'm sorry, when checking for amperage, you wanna be able to connect in series to where it's just one circular path to allow current to flow through and not in parallel because if you're in parallel there's a chance that you could blow a fuse and that's no good in this video we talked about how to use a multimeter to check for voltage resistance and current if you're interested in learning more about instrumentation or how electrical circuits work please hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one